warning these are the opinions of me myself oh and my and my two friends here my two people here uh if you ever feel offended please take it up to my trash can because that's where it's gonna go thank you and have a nice day l t s kick back relax and enjoy the lts podcast my best friend Salutations. Welcome to the LTS podcast. My name is Marcos. With me is, from top to bottom, Mr. Allen. Allen, please introduce yourself. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Allen. Thanks again for having me on the podcast. Hope to have a great conversation. And then, last but not least, Mr. J. Oi, it's Mr. J. That's all. <laughs> But yeah, so <laughs> at the moment, we have, we're in the middle of a chat, you know, of uh, talking about uh, some stuff that we we found interesting. Like, And for I'd example, like how, how yes. in reality, Marco's real name is Felipe the Third, and he don't want to express that. I, I, I plead the fifth. Oh. I, 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 I plead silence. No I'm not even in court. I haven't committed a exactly. crime, I swear. <laughs> not anything that can be traced to me. That you think. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> What has he been hiding? <laughs> Shh. Don't you worry about that. Don't you worry. Child? Okay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, um, basically the there was an idea. Would you please introduce us to an enlightening story, Mr. Uh, Alan? Uh, so first order of business, uh, we'll go through um, our podcast notes, and I'm um, I have the honor of reading the first one, which is Number titled, <laughs> which is titled. Planned obsolescence. Is it all that bad? Question mark. So, ah, uh, good lord. There's plenty of bullet points here, and I'm pretty sure it's like the condensed, you know, uh, of whatever wherever you got your your source, right? Spark so, notes, if you will. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the first one being, uh, it says presently there exists a firehouse with the world record of the longest last light bulb. As of 2021, it's been on for, I believe, 120 years, if I'm not mistaken. I'm reading this right. And then the second bullet point says, first turned on in 1901, this light bulb was used and hasn't been turned off. And then the third bullet point says, showcasing not only the craftsmanship of handmade bulbs, the fact that not so dairy moves were made to change this? Not so uh, am I reading this? daring moves. Oh, daring. Oh, I apologize. Uh, next bullet point. Uh, there was an Keep idea. Keep in mind that that says dairy. <laughs> It says diary almost. <laughs> uh, there was an idea once. Light bulbs reached the lifespan of 3,000 plus hours. Global companies that control different parts of the world, monopolies, in quotations or i mean in parentheses i apologize noticed a decrease in sales plus or minus 25 a year after the best light bulb was created in the 1920s wait who who wrote this how do you say decrease um, and then say plus or minus 25 a difference <laughs> a, it was an average of more or less i'm, I'm just reading so so I'm an average of there uh, so an average decrease of 25 It could be 24.3. It could be a uh, 24. Uh, you know, so you say I'm around, rounding up. You, you, so you, this plus is the wrong or minus symbol. 25. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's the wrong symbol because that's like negative 25 <laughs> to positive 25. This is the right symbol for that. Oh, today oh. I learned. 
Okay. How would you say Very that? Good. How would you say that? Around twenty five percent. If it's less than, if you sure it's for sure less than twenty five. If it's greater, and if it's around, it could be the same. Then there. Yeah, that one. No, that, it looks like uh, the the it, line that you run on top of an end. It's, yeah. it's a squiggly line. <clears throat> hmm. Today I learned. It, it, it's it's mustache, right? <laughs> there you so go, the, a mustache line. Uh, so the next bullet point, uh, it says after a light mafia was See, established. That one's in quotations. <laughs> yes, in, that's in quotes, right? Was established. There was an agreement to decrease the life of bulbs. The next point being from three thousand to one thousand. Basically, then, there was a decrease. A standardized okay. decrease. I don't know why, but um, there there is a reason why. But it was a standardized decrease. All right, we'll get money. into it, Marcos. Gold divorces. It. Next bullet point. Oh, due, Bessie, to, <laughs> due to this group, there was a global standardization. Next bullet point says at the beginning of World War II, this group disbanded. Oh, then no. the next bullet point says. Their ideas and techniques of planned obsolescence can particularly be seen in, in smartphones slash consumer industries. And then the last bullet point says, considering that there's always two or more stories of a subject, is the planned obsolescence ideology overall good or bad in the 21st century and beyond? Question mark. This is why we can't have nice things. And then there's a link to YouTube where I'm pretty sure Mr. Marcos gathered most of his information for this first. I had to do research for him. Uh, whichever thing that this individual was saying, like, hold up, let me double check. I found uh, okay. the reference for that. And then and then he said, oh, there's a caveat for everything. The, and you, if you want to, in the, in the show notes, you can see the ideas that I planned out for you, dear but listener. But before you that, <laughs> there are some extra references. There you go. That there's the light bulb conspiracy, which is another YouTube video, which no. reference another YouTube video. No. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Right, no, well, right. There is that. <laughs> but one of the references is, I think this is a published report. Yeah, it's a published report um, by a person, last name London, uh, called Ending Depression Through Plan uh, Obsolescence. Then there's another Depression. one of, oh uh, yeah, Depression. Uh, of last name Slade uh, made to break technology and obsolescence in America Harvard University Press uh, then there's another person who I cannot pronounce their name uh, it says the great <laughs> the great light bulb <laughs> conspiracy IEEE spectrum 51 parentheses 10 parentheses 56 that's his name 251 26 no 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 that's oh. the name of, of the report or the oh, okay. the thesis report there. no this, sorry this article never mind <laughs> These links uh, need to be put in the show. Is oh, and later do you think you can show me those links, Mister J? I'll put them in the notes. Copy and paste. Maybe I will. I will. But he, he can share it to me whichever way. Oh no! Anything. Well, okay. So one was like a like a published report. One was a book, and another one was like an article. I feel like the report is the legit, more legit personally. But you know, there could be some. You know, why? Why stuff. the bias there, Marcos? Why My the engineering bias? On inside the engineering inside of me? saying article that's the the true no no the that's report the oh the, the report the report oh yeah the the published thesis report is um there a thesis there's a certain procedure for yeah, a it looks like this was like this was like someone's oh, research I see, I see. idea uh 1932 so they're old yeah so in, in yeah. the 20s very the, old the big the, the great depression wait 19, it said yeah. 1932 32 yeah yeah not the 20s it's 30s yeah but yeah so long story short there was a drive specifically since, since the beginning yeah, right since the beginning of <laughs> thomas edison according to you know whatever history we all know is that thomas edison created one of the first light bulbs with a piece of cotton but it burned out it, it lasted for no <laughs> yeah right now uh it only lasted <laughs> like a, uh, yeah not not the car company the person yeah and <laughs> not not mr musk yeah, or anyone no, no. that no no i don't want to make this even worse but yeah so basically he created his first light bulb in the last like 100 hours a little bit over 100 hours with a with a cotton thread and then the highest standard that they had to the point that uh engineers went went ham on the light bulb and they, they changed the design there was competition 
all those things, you know, everything was was popping off for the light bulb, except the bulb itself, you know. And they they reached the standard of of I don't know if you guys remember Doctor Stone that he what what did he want to make his his light bulb out of? I know Doctor Seuss. I know Doctor Stone. What are the doc Doctor Doctor Doolittle? <coughs> Doctor Doolittle. And, there you go. Yes, and Doctor Doogie Howser. Uh, anime Doctor uh, Doctor Stone. Remember what he wanted to make his light bulb out of? There was a whole Tungsten? thing. Yep, that was the peak, if you will. What the filament that he yep. used mm, to create? There was a whole shebang that happened in the early, late 1900s, early 1800s, late eight, 1900s, early 20th century, and they made the the tungsten. The well, tungsten you said a lot of bulb. dates there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, people could just look up the date of the o, low G light bulb. You know, that one I I am not gonna look up but you know thank you for listening to that story anyways so can you imagine co- uh, different companies uh joined up to create a standard first like of uh, the threaded light bulb that was one of the standards that they created and uh once they uh they they all agreed on that the other thing was to decrease the amount of hours on said light bulb which was approximately more or less a thousand hours. Well, well, Marcos, you know, if we were, if we were going back to history, that I means. remember, you know, a group of a group of men came together and said, "We don't want to be taxed unfairly," and then out came out America. Yes. <laughs> a union? <laughs> no, a, a, a revolutionary a force. A marriage? <laughs> no, Marcos, it's a revolutionary <laughs> force that popped out America. America. Yes, so many I people have come together and decided on something to do. And yeah, agreed on things like that. Yeah. But yeah, long story short, like um the the point was But that, but yes. I'm gonna have to cut you off there, Marcos again. Okay. Okay. They so in the video they reference uh, a chart. Right? Okay. There so was a chart. This, so this chart, I'm I'm gonna label some axes here, okay? Uh on the X I can So yes. basically it's um it's it's like a it's, it's a chart with two different different types of data. Uh, it references the, the thing that is common to them is the time period, and it goes from the average lifespan of the light bulb to how much sales they have. And this is, <laughs> mind you, this they, they say from zero to five hundred, but in parentheses they're like, oh, but this is millions of dollars. Millions. Um. So they've noticed that. Uh, from 1924 to 1934 it went from roughly around 350 million dollars to uh roughly under 250 million dollars so in a span of what 10 years it dropped like a solid like 100 well, million not, not solid not solid like around 100 million that's so, a third almost yeah that's more that's chunk. 20 that's 20 that, that's not and like even even right, crazy yeah. is that it went from it went from a, like a, I think around a peak of around uh, eighteen hundred hours to averaging around twelve hundred hours of, of life in the light bulb. Um, well, so like so yeah, can you imagine that like because of their their incentive to sell more, they had to standard everywhere around the world. There had to be a standardization, and then another thing to incentivize or to what would a punishment if you will if these companies didn't follow the standard they uh they introduced a ticket um yeah a oh wait, no sorry i i didn't read i didn't read into the, the video more so it turns out that okay so the actual number it looks like i think i got it now um uh, so it went from actually the 300 million to around 450 million uh, increase of sales yeah, but so, after that, so it increased or decreased? So in this in the span of ten years, it increased uh, roughly about yeah, roughly the same. It would be a hundred billion. Yeah, okay. and then like it, it's it's just going down the the lifespan of a light bulb. Oof. I, I just, the the second line didn't pop up. Okay. Oof. So yeah, but in order to incentivize that, the lifespan of it to be more or less a thousand hours, uh, there was a ticket. And uh, every time, every, for every hundred hours that went over, they were ticketed a certain amount. And this incentivized every light bulb company producer around the world uh, to have that standard. In in the back end, as a factory, there were engineers again, not only working to make it the light bulb last longer. Now it was the other way to last less. I don't know what the the secret sauce was, but they made it. 
And then uh, another thing that they standardized is that every every uh, Q and A quality control, they had to send the quality control to the more or less where they to each one of these from each one of these companies around the world to this central location that everyone agreed to meet at every year. Every year they had to send a batch of each one of the um, to send a review, and that created the standardization of uh, quality control. Because each one of these companies were had a, more or less a zone of them to to do their sales, their marketplace. They had to keep each other in a checks and balances, if you will, with a, a yearly or a periodic quality control. And I found that very, very interesting. That uh, mass production etiquette. I don't want to say edit, etiquette, like um, liability. What's the word that I'm looking for, Alan? Here, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like uh, etiquette, liability, or I don't know what the word I'm looking for here is like a, everyone, each one of these big companies are re- held responsible with a ticket and also a way to prove that they're doing their work by sending a random pack of, of their, their light bulbs to be reviewed, peer reviewed and say it lasts this amount of time. You are not ticketed. So that's over this time. You are ticketed. What's that? They're held re- in contempt or in respon- responsible. What would be the word? I don't there? know. It sounds <clears throat> like to me, it sounds like. Some sort of standardization right that yes that each company or each company in that field or that particular uh part of uh, the world situ or situation that or the industry that they're working in they have to meet a certain criteria in order for them to produce a product that is universally not only used but also universally accepted as safe in the household or something of that nature so that's where we have things uh, at least in the u.s we have things like fda or or other three letter acronym type of uh designated organizations that let you know or uh the companies have to abide by the rules that are set in place by either government in- institutions or uh i guess you can say maybe business institutions like a third party type of uh a uh, uh, broker or dealer or issuer of some sort of license or something like that and then tickets you know pu- but, be able to dole out punishment uh yeah but that that's logical that's logical if you're gonna think about it in business in a business sense you you know that you have a problem on your hands if you're gonna make a an item or a product that's gonna outlast the potential customer or outlast um a certain criteria uh and, and it it works it works a lot of times especially when we're talking about uh, your example is the light bulb we you know monopolies aren't a new thing whether it be the gas uh situation or like the the petrol that you put in your car or the or the something milk that closer you buy to at my the grocery heart. store or something closer to my heart anime well, let's not jump to conclusions there, Marcos. That's this is just my thought. That, that's again. something. That's no, just my idea. That's yeah. very distinct. Yeah, you're gonna put uh, a person's life <laughs> as the same as a light bulb. Like uh, I don't know. Um, that's very weird. It is. But it is. more I'm than not anything say else. It's not. Yeah, more more than anything else, it it just makes logical sense. In in a company would be dumb to try to make something that lasts too long because then they they're shooting themselves in the foot because they're not going to be able to sell anything more to the same customer the business model usually revolves around um and we can take apple as a, an example right so modern day giant they produce yeah. an iphone right and and right now we're we're using this as an example because it's technology based and mm, more times than not we'll see that they uh, have a new iteration of the the newest iPhone, for an example, right? Uh, every three to six months, they're coming out with something new. They have some sort of incremental advancement where they can actually put in the phone that's going to work. Whether it be software or hardware, the hardware aspect is something that 
planned obsolescence is something that's already baked into the actual hardware where um they'll they'll clock down the actual you know uh i guess there were battery. lawsuits uh, yeah yes yes but again the reason they do it is because uh so they say right that it's because they want to uh maintain a certain quality control of the actual device so it doesn't overheat it doesn't uh break down and deter deteriorate more than it needs to in order for it to be useful for the consumer uh and then you go to the software right the phone can only update so much until you know it needs to get updated and this is one of the the big things for technology as far as technology goes where planned obsolescence obsolescence is something that's baked in especially with technology um things that you that are mechanical is a little different because usually the tendency for for mechanical things are are usually made to last right 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 so I'm trying to think of an example, um, something cars. like a, a what mechanical about cars? watch or a watch and well, watches way better. Cars. Well, yeah. So the watch, right? So let's say you take a mechanical watch, uh, you know, perpetual movement type of watch or something that has uh, some sort of analog to it, right? The, the movements, the complications that are in the watch you need to hand wind it in order for it to keep working. Uh, the actual watch maker, master watch maker, is very detailed about the complications inside the watch in order for it to last long. You want that watch to last you. And even if you beat it up a little bit, you know, the, the idea is for it to do its job and do its job well for as many years as it it, it 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 needs right and you know you you pay a certain price for that time piece and you're gonna cherish it and you can even pass it down as a heirloom to the next generation that's what that type of mechanical uh piece was created or intended for something that would last long take pride in in the craftsmanship right and there's certain things that are mechanical and in, in that nature that are meant to be that way where plan obsolescence wasn't really the goal. The goal was to make something that works, works great and will last you, you know, for a really long time. But in, in the business world, sometimes those things aren't part of the business plan because it doesn't make sense because once they, you know, they run out or the person has it, and it doesn't break down or it doesn't need an upgrade, then you potentially lose that customer until, you know, you either come up with a, something way new that disrupts the actual industry or, you know, you, you go bankrupt because you can't sell to the same customer anymore. So that's, I mean, I, I see it that way because uh, a lot of the companies nowadays are very much that way, where companies back in the day, you can call them monopolies because they talked amongst themselves and try to, you know, figure out a way to be profitable or make money, but also screw the little, the, the little guy because, you know, they, they, they felt the need that they, they, or not the need, or yeah, perhaps the need to make money, you know, off the backs of, you know, the common man and woman. So yeah again the example here again the light bulb there were so many competitors and a lot on, just in the americas some of them got bought up and uh incorporated into the to the bigger companies yeah yeah that story is just like an example there's a lot more like uh i don't know maybe uh Watch, no, watches Watches is like You really still need A craftsman For those classical ones So I can't Smartphones <laughs> What about the Smartphone industry Today Well a lot of people Would say Well What's the point Of having a wristwatch If you have a Smartphone on you That tells You know The exact time 
But mm-hmm. I mean, you have a time piece, not only for telling time, but it's an actual statement. It's a piece that tells a story. It's a icebreaker, if you will. It's something that keeps it its value if it's the right type of timepiece, say like a Rolex, a Tudor, uh, an Omega, or some sort of um, other type of uh, watch, like a like a Seiko or a Hamilton or something of that nature, or an Orient, right? So watches that will not only do their job correctly, but it holds its value and it might even increase in value over time that you can pass down to your your kid and your kid will pass it down to their kid and whatnot right and you know it keeps some sort of you know horology and and, and some sort of a time you know, piece like a, a family heirloom if yeah you will. It, it has that potential there you go it does it does but you can't really you can't really say the same thing or try to do the same thing with like an Apple Watch or a Samsung Samsung uh, smartwatch. Something you that I never the thought thing, would have done that. Same thing. I mean, like um, the one isn't when. How long does an item does it take for an item to become a collector's item? Like the Pokemon cards, like first generation right now. There's a big, a big. Uh, not enough time. Not enough. Yeah, not enough. Like uh, the Pokemon cards, how long was that? And right now, with the big boom. So remember that came out like around the, so like what ninety one ninety two, is when it yeah. had that big push, right? Yeah. So imagine we're in twenty twenty one, going on to twenty twenty two, in like next two months or whatnot. <laughs> so thirty so, years. <laughs> give or take thirty yeah. years, but not every not every art asset or collector collectible is the same, right? We can say we can compare. To like a ty beanie babies for those who are old enough to remember uh who? those were no. <laughs> uh, the like like it was a big deal for a lot know, of people yeah. thinking that it was going to be or we can say comic books right for some yes, other people yes. that thought com- certain com- certain comic books were going to sell for more than others but like a lot of other collectibles it, some someone or something throws a monkey wrench at the situation and makes some of these collectibles uncollectible or not as rare and i think that's something that we we could keep in mind or we should keep in mind the rarity of that certain something to give it value not only uh the price of how much it costs when you first obtain it but the exclusivity of it how rare it actually is usually these are the things that are like one of out of a hundred right or one out of 20 or something like that that's what makes it exclusive and hard to to obtain and when people and in this case as like the pokemon cards uh when logan paul started like looking for them and paying out breaches you know amounts of money for certain cards like the charizard hollow you know shadowless Porsche, uh, Porsche HD. Right? Or, <laughs> or first editions right these are the things that people were like oh man it, it, that's what i need to get in order for me to put my money in a safe i guess you can say a safe holding right so did, and, he, sub- did he create a demand more or less for this item or was there all did he just uh make it to well, well there, was, shown. there was there was yeah there was always a demand but there his his he added more wood to the flame the man. right he mm. fanned the flames that that basically snowballed the actual i guess run boom. to who yeah the boom of who can get not only a card but who can who get can catch them all <laughs> literally packs or boxes of unopened pokemon cards from back in the 90s right and that's what made the boom so much bigger because there was already a market for it and then they went a step further and went to appraisers to get these card appraised in order Who for that? To someone from even more GameStop? exclusive <laughs> uh, no there's a actually there's a gentleman i i forgot his name he's out i think in las vegas if i'm not mistaken or in california i forgot what state he's in i think he's in vegas and he, this gentleman is uh i think he's I think he's called uh, Mr. Mr. Pokemon or something like that. I forgot his nickname. Oh wait, the but guy that that uh that helped out um 
Logan. Logan. Yeah. If I, I remember, they, he, I forgot what his name was, but I remember he's kind of a scandal because he what he didn't do well appraising these cards. Um. So you're saying that I sold like my I, Pokemon cards for too low of a price? Maybe. Well, I mean, that's just how it goes. Dang. Because like yeah. back before, before uh, Logan Paul, you know, did the whole thing, the the charge that he pulled wasn't worth that much. It was worth like. 10k and now the last one that sold is worth over 300,000 right so. and it's all part it's all part of perspective it's not until he threw his hat in the ring that the boom actually started that's what the, I'm saying to make the individuals pull like a specific person pulled more individuals into the competition if you will well don't get me wrong I mean the the guy I'm talking about he loved the actual collecting aspect of the, the Pokemon cards before it was something, I guess you can say, cool, right? Or something really sought out, sought after by a bigger um, demographic group of people. Yeah, right, right. And I guess you could say he was in the right place at the right time because he his portfolio was stacked with the the right the right cards that were already graded in like a SP. Oh, I forgot oh, PSA, the, uh, S- PSA <laughs> P- or <laughs> PSA, PSA, and I think Barrick. Bear, uh, Barrick, oh, Beckett? I think it's called. Beckett, Beckett. There you go. Right. These are appraising companies that appraise cards and other collectibles. I also, from perspective, you, PSA typically does like Yu Gi Oh cards, uh, what some about baseball other cards. So here's the thing they don't really do baseball cards. The people who do that is Beckett. Beckett does Beckett, baseball cards and right. they have a higher criteria of what, what's rated what. So, like, they right, always right, bring right. up the example of like a PSA 10 is not the same as a, as a Beckett 10, pristine 10. Right. So, you know, it just... There you go. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because he was in the right place at the right time because then he had all the power because everybody was basically going t- to him to get cards uh, checked out or if he knew somebody that could uh, get somebody else to sell their card or something like that. So... He, he became very, very sought after as well. So he, he had a particular set of skills that a lot of people wanted, more or less. Right, right. But again, planned obsolescence. Wait, wait, wait how is that, that obsolescence, topic? though? How is that obsolescence, in your opinion? Is that an obs- obsolescence thing? I feel like time will tell in that sense, right? Like a craftsman uh, over time, his plas- planned obsolescence would be his retirement, right? Like he, he's so no, the individual no. could be so old that he can't see the mati- the the with the magnifying glass. Like oh, I can't. Or my hands are too shaky that more or less my physical body can't continue this work. Isn't that like more or less an obsolescence? No, in I, t- I was just going to say let's go yeah. back. I, I was just going to suggest we go back to the original <laughs> uh, point, not necessarily um, trying to connect the two. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, because I mean, no, no, no one would have, who could have guessed that Pokemon cards were going to get to that point. It wasn't until somebody of note, like a Logan Paul with a crazy following, got into that hobby and then became a, part- a participant in, in in that world of collecting Pokemon cards where yep. again it's been 30 plus years the number of unopened boxes dwindled you know it's becoming more rare a lot more exclusive uh, there's less of those cards circulating and even harder to get something appraised to a certain degree like the the Becca 10 or the uh, well, what's again the PSA yeah PSA uh, 10 as well yep so again the, the less of something the more valuable it is right even if it kind of seems weird to other people and not so valuable to other people I mean you can't eat the Charizard card right but if you sell it you'll be able to get a hefty reward in order for you to actually pay for your daily needs if you need to right so if these are things that people start right, thinking you know. about mm-hmm. right not every collectible is gonna get to that degree of you know of crazy mania right um so i mean 
you pick and choose your battles and you know you have to do your research first and your due diligence before you do that but that that's that's i guess you can say a totally different aspect of of that part right but if we were to go back to the main point of plant obsolescence yeah you you imagine a samsung or apple or any company especially a technology company that that didn't bake in plant obsolescence into their into their actual hardware they would be losing a lot of money because then people wouldn't need they wouldn't have a need to upgrade to the next a supply you know, and demand right because technology is so it is ever changing and always advancing and it's it seems to be updating every three to six months you're gonna offer new updates to people and people are willing to, to to spend the money to get those new adjustments adaptations or upgrades so they can say i have the latest and greatest or, or maybe it's something that they want yeah of course so that's how i look at it. it it would be dumb for companies not to do it unless you're you're a company that are, are like again i don't think you can really compare an Apple Watch or a Samsung Galaxy Watch or a Google Watch or any other type of uh, technology consumer type of watch to a, you know, a Rolex watch, right? Or another... what about clothing in that matter? Well, there's certain pieces that have that that have that um, tinge of 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 collectible or collectability or just desire that. How, to create a desire to have more or less a drive no it's a maybe it's a piece that was created or made by very famous uh clothes maker i i, I forgot what you would call these people of uh of fashion, fashion designers. designers right so this fashion designer probably created a certain type of um uh a piece that there's only maybe like 10 of them in the world right or 15 that in the is world, the ultimate supply dang right and because it's made from i don't know some sort of uh special um material and it, it was it was not only made with special material it was designed in such a way that only 20 were were able to be manufactured or made or stitched by hands. hand even yeah right hand stitched with the actual with the actual you know initials or signature with stitching inside the actual lapel or something of the the piece or the garment <laughs> from the actual fashion designer that <clears throat> makes it or it, it, it's like say it's uh an example what if remember the the little red jacket that michael jackson wore when he did uh, some of his his performances oh no marcos no i mean no sorry who was there who was that <laughs> so uh, a piece of clothing that was worn by a uh, like super famous person might garner a, a different price than something that wasn't worn by that person and you know it puts a time and a place to that piece of uh clothing and might garner a higher price than say a regular coat that probably is a lot warmer or a lot more practical but because a certain person wore it at a certain event at a certain it, time it, at a certain place at a certain time, a concert a certain for place. right okay okay how about this one that, though? right okay now that you're saying certain time certain place oh no Marcos I'm gonna have to hold it back there for a minute what you're gonna have, you're gonna have we're gonna have to stop you right there sir Go for it. Go for what? There's, you know, something historical that can potentially, you know, guide us through the threads of history with, you know, OG threads of clothing. I like my nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hit yeah, us with the story, Mr. J. Oh, okay. Uh, unearthed textiles from Stone Age settlement reveal a history of cloth making. From this place in Turkey. <laughs> Can you just say it with the with the assistant over there with uh with the pass through? I don't I know like how to spell. <clears throat> gobble gobble. Uh, how do I? How do? I, this is even a word, or is this something? Marcos it's in Turkey. Found? Is that a language? <laughs> yes. You sure? The Turkish uh, language. 
I like turkey. Pronunciation. <laughs> you just say it twice. <laughs> Did I mention that I like turkey? And wait, hold up. It's, it's loading. Shout out to Google. Chat Pronounce it. Peter yeah. Grill? What? Peter, why it Marcus? Anyway, uh, possibly one, just one, of the oldest locations was excavated, confirmed to be 8,000 to 9,000 years old. Is it though? Yeah. It's Discovered not the in oldest, the late but... 1950s, location with the confirmed oldest preserved fibers for clothing to date. Not wool. It's not or, wool. Or, or linen. Linen? Or linen. Linen? The linen, yeah. Uh, people use assorted varieties of exactly this material. Bast. Let's say bast. Continue. I see bast. <laughs> is this bass or is it, is it best? Bast fibers. Bast fibers were used for thousands of years to make rope, thread, and in turn, also yarn and, clo- and cloth. A fiber sample from a basket tor- uh, turned out to be made of grass. What type of grass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but several of the textiles are made of bass fiber from oak, uh, oak, uh, oak trees. Uh, there are also the oldest preser- uh, preserved woven fabrics in the world. Bass fiber is found between the bark and the wood in trees such as willow, oak, or linden. Yes. Uh, they use oak bars and thus, that this thus, fashion their clothes, clo- uh, yeah, clothes from the bark of the trees that they found in the surroundings. Also, oak timber as a building materials for their homes and people undoubtedly harvested the bass fibers when trees were, f- were, f- were filled. Filled? Past, f- past tense for fall. You know, they cut the trees now. When they fell. When they fell. But this ED. When they felled the trees. The, the, but there is no When the filled. trees were felled. <laughs> when they, when they fell. No, they didn't fall automatically. They dropped them trees. They cut them in. They yeah, cut when they fell. When the no. trees fell. Where, where, and when the trees fell. They didn't fall on their own. Not not only gravity helped, but also, you know, a cutting so, utensils. So then it would be when the, trees, the when the trees were cut down. Yeah. Yes. Or just one word. Felled. Yeah, tomato, tomato. You're right. You're right. But yeah, I've never, I've never heard that word being used that way. Because it's not. Because it is. <laughs> it's not. That's not a word, Marcos. Look it up. Felled. Yes. As he looks up as well. Yes. Uh, let's see. Fell. Past particulate. Felled. Was well, also Cut. squared. Cut. To cut down. Fell is the past tense of fall. If trees are felled, they are cut down. Felled. I felled. don't know. I don't, I don't believe this. Oh, here's Marion Webster. Miss Webster. That woke piece of garbage. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Team, okay, so basically, in this case, there was a certain. No, no, no. Certain, in this case, no, 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 no. In this listen, case, in this historical no, 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 case, this case, this is. This is what happened. <clears throat> they went up and this mysterious little orange ball of fur came up to me and was like, I'm the Lorax. I speak <laughs> for the trees. What are you doing? <laughs> You're not speaking to the trees. You're just cutting them down. Exactly. What? Why? And then he ended up on the on the spit roast. And then he, he uh, grabbed himself from from his rear and just left. Basically, but yeah, they use this, they use trees for already making you know fires, making houses, making different stuff. So why not just use as much as they can from the tree, the the bast material? I didn't I didn't even think about that, but they spent a lot of time with those with those trees, and like you know what, they got they found certain uses for it. rope, for example, you know, and then they also made a mahogany. Made, <laughs> I don't they I don't know if they said they didn't say that they can make it out of mahogany. They can make it out of uh oak and uh what was the other one? 
uh, Linden, I don't know, but yeah, I, I found that like they live in that environment when there were a lot of trees, they could make a living out of it. That reminded me a oh, lot of the Native this is, Americans. This is, this is what they used to make twine. Twine. Yeah. The first people, not these first people, but the first people that they can positive, positively ID. So this creativity of, of finding a way to, you know, survive, live just with the trees. And, so you again, know, I'm the Lorax. I speak Lorax. for the trees. <laughs> Basically. Do you think that that this this could create an again a trend no, of no, wanting no, to use no, trees no, as no, a clothing no, utensil? No, 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 Marcos, you're you're, you're too you're thinking about it too much. Am I going too deep? Yes, we're gonna have to reel you back in to create the ultimate biodegradable piece of cloth. Cloth. No, Mar- Marcos, if they start making <clears throat> clothing out of trees again, I will burn these trees. <laughs> Paper. Oh, uh, what else? Pencils. Notice how you're not saying clothing. Clothing. <laughs> oh, now you said it. That's too late. <laughs> oh my god. Termites will have a field day with these clothes. Yeah, I think it's it's better to use uh, nylon. synthetic nylon. Synthetics. Poly, polymer. Poly, no, yeah, polymers. But what about cotton or wool then? Hmm? That riddled me that one, Lorax. What do you mean? That ain't trees. No, you say those ain't trees. Exactly. <laughs> I only speak for for <laughs> ten feet and uh, above. Did you not hear my introductions? <laughs> I said I speak for the trees. I did not say I speak for the plants. <laughs> but what is what is a tree but a big plant? Yeah, by be I'm specific. Oh, so so okay. I guess I guess I'll leave it there. I mean, nowadays people are are wearing so many blends of different things that or a fashion okay. statement. I mean, look or nowadays cheap. you you'll have like polyester mixed with some sort of kind of blend or silk mixed with something else in order for you to get uh, your clothes. So, I mean, hemp is, has also been used hey. in order for, for that's, clothing. That's the wrong. Like that. You're thinking about Damn. the wrong part of the plant, Marcos. Oh, <laughs> right. It's oh. the other one. It's not the one that makes you go go in the sky. Sky high, fly. So, yeah, I mean, that that's that's the uh, interesting one, not, uh, but um, I lost my train of thought. I pause. Ticket, please. <laughs> Ticket. And no, it's because the Lorax came in. He was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> he got intimidated the by trees. the Lorax. It Maybe. just it just comes up into Alan's face. I said, "I speak for the trees." Yes, go plant some more trees. Makes us gives us more work. Oh, more, more, more oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely more oxygen. We need we need to breathe. I need to breathe. There you go. <laughs> breathe, breathe. <sighs> yes, yes. And then you know we need some for the cologne sense, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> so I, I, so I learned that that that's 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 BS. I'm sorry, Marcos. What? <laughs> we don't. <laughs> You just, you, but just you, know, you know, we do use Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Hey, <laughs> we both have the same we, oh, I like well, it. But well, I Musk, mean, he's Musk his... is uh, the pheromones that the deer, produ- male pro- deer produces. Ooh, delicious. And it's actually used in perfumes. For memes, I can't wait to have a cologne line called Elon Musk. <laughs> Best no. best bet like um well what, what's her name the the one that um sold her bath water. Uh, oh, I don't even remember Delphine she what? Uh, <laughs> sold her bath water. Yeah, yeah, she did. I, I, Holy smoke! You know that, that she has the ultimate wild. supply and demand. You know. You know and that it, she also stopped selling know. that for legal purposes or for just you know she just yes. hasn't taken a well, bath until yet until today yes. that yes. sounds disgusting what it was hell? disgusting I, but people bought it for some reason I don't know why yeah now, I'm like that's that's nasty yeah but, it is but lucrative for her I mean she, yeah, she made I mean, money off of it I mean she can now retire make money of it. that's like the ultimate OnlyFans type of uh 
like thing, right? Now, how I many? This was, before, this was before old OnlyFans got big too. I think. Oh, I think she, she, that's she. That's she old. Pre- yeah, no? she preceded. Yeah, it uh, came out. Oh, it, it came no. out. Bef- she sold it before the pandemic. 2019, 2018. <laughs> yeah, she knew. Uh, Oh no! She best bet that she's needs in that water, and nobody's nobody's you know said anything about it. They said please and thank you. Can I have another? Yeah, unfortunately, people did say that. Oh, and now how many people do you think will line up for some Elon Elon you know Musk? None. Who who wants that? Let's put it on uh, unless unless he specifically <laughs> makes a perfume as that's called Elon Musk. Then yeah. maybe will people will oh, take it, but it's not gonna smell like him. It's gonna be like something Aldi he Buffer. likes. What would be what would be the, the titles? Okay, look, just the titles. Oh, the Musk Elon Edition. Oh, the Musk. Mm. Oh, the Musk. I no, know. I think he's a little bit more classy. Yeah, I'm thinking more of like uh. He might. He know, might maybe. like. He might like do a collab he, with uh like like. Carolina Herrera from like Barcelona, like a uh, man <laughs> Privé, or maybe like a uh, Creed Aventus, like from Italian. I don't know. Or maybe he calls it. He calls it. He calls it Aventura. <laughs> <laughs> or but Aventador a, from with the Lamborghinis he has. He wait, but he's a uh, South African. Maybe he'll do something a little bit more from his Mozambique. Roots, right? Oh wait, no, South Africa. Maybe he'll do Cape, Cape, uh, like Cape Town or something like that, right? And he'll Those have that, that sounds Cod? like a cologne on itself if they came out, like yes. Madagascar and vanilla or something like that. That's close. King Julian. <laughs> King Julian. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a good one. perfume you want to smell like. Perfume. King Julian. King when Julia. You, King Julian. When you want to move it, move it. La parfum. <laughs> when you want to move it, move it. That's a good one. <laughs> when you That's want, the when you want girls around you to move it, move it. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, Cologne should now start having um anime titles. Oh no! I, I remember. Light novel I remember, titles. I remember. I uh, remember. What's it called? Watching this uh, YouTuber uh, Ohara. He, he's a German guy that lives in in uh, Japan. He was out and about in Akiba, I think. And there was a section in one of the stores that he was at that were that was selling uh, one piece colognes and perfumes from all the characters. As you so, do, yes, yes. So you wanted to smell like your favorite character. You can definitely pick up a cologne or perfume uh, of that character to smell like that individual character. Chopper. Yes, you could smell like Chopper, Beer. like Tony. Tony you smell Hopper. like Boku no Chopper, <laughs> no Boku no Doctor, Tony Tony Chopper. Yeah, he he's an actual deer, a reindeer. You can get or we OG get just some Musk. Party. Maybe maybe they would they would probably go for something a little more sweeter because I think his favorite food is like uh, cotton candy, so it yes, might be like. It is. On the sweeter side, <laughs> Mr. J, you know, doesn't even have to see his notes. What about Nami? What would she be? A tangerines. <clears throat> what? Tangerines. Yeah, yeah, ten, no, yeah, no, tangerines. Tangerines, yeah, and money. Yeah, and uh, that's it. What about uh? What about uh? Usopp. Usopp. Maybe like a uh, rubber for the. Well, no, maybe like a flower because you know how his shots after the time skip became like plant based. Oh yeah, or gunpowder. No, whoa, How do you get a sense for that? <laughs> yeah, you don't use guns. No, just, no. But maybe like an maybe as a connection to his dad that he's no, a great true. like marksman. But I, I like the the greenery type of thing. Like his he the does theme. have seeds. Yeah, the seeds for plant. <laughs> Some the flower seeds. Seeds. Piranha plants that come out of his his, his balls. What? <laughs> his little shots. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh. What about not, what about uh uh, what about uh, Luffy? Nico Robin? Okay, oh. Robin. Robin could Robin? be like these hands. <laughs> well, no, I'll probably be like more more classy because she is like a classy maybe lady. Like, yeah, like maybe like flowers because she has like a floor, right? She calls it something floor. Oh, something yeah. Something like blooming. Yeah, like a floor theme. No, but something perfume. <laughs> Next snap. Flower. <laughs> flower. Just, just name it flower. Right. <laughs> But yeah, that, um, that'll be the name of the perfume, and then you know what, like, like I said, like um, uh, Tony or Tony Tony Chopper could be like you know, like you said um, will be his like candy. candy, and then uh, 
Oh, nah, it would what, be what a about Brooke? Wow. Brooke? Yeah, Brooke would probably sound <laughs> like that. <laughs> would? <laughs> no, would. No. He, he, he was, his violin and all this thing. Like Maybe, but he probably... No, no, when, dead, he might when, when like you... That. When you what spray, the, what it, is that? <laughs> what no, no, no. That? When you spray his cologne, you you hear a little. That should be a little. That should be a little thing when you push the button for the spray. Or it's, it's, oh, yo, you hear no binks. Oh, maybe sake. Binks yeah, maybe no sake. Whoa. Maybe it smells like booze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like booze. Right, no, no, no. That's Zoro. But Zoro could probably have also like a, on top of that. Maybe he has um because uh, Sanji calls him Moss Head. Maybe like a oh, touch yeah. of like green go. moss or something like that. With maybe <laughs> <Live> moss. Uh, <laughs> Live moss. There you go. Head. Moss head. <laughs> Wait, well, yes. Of course. Moss head. <laughs> <laughs> there but, you go. but there's a there's a side effect if you put on cologne, you get lost. Oh yes. So you because lose you're, your... you get drunk. <laughs> yeah. No 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 so no no like, sober. <laughs> so sake so get lost. Is like a, a mix of, of smell of, of sake with like that greenery of moss, right? Or maybe like a yale, be- maybe be better. Because he drinks anything. It's a good thing I'm recording this so that we can, you know, you know, give ideas to any listener out there. What about what about Sanji? <laughs> what about Sanji? Uh, oh, like a, a, a great no, uh, oh, no, 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 no. What's the um, what's the Spanish dish that's like rice and seafood? Oh, uh, uh, the paella. Yeah. yeah, that's how I imagine him smell like. <laughs> he smelled like a paella. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. I don't know. No, because because like both. that's that's like one of the dishes. I think that was one of the dishes or something yeah. like that. I think I, they came I out agree. with a. Uh, I think um he came out or what's it called? He's French, um, I think. Yes. No, he's an nope. anime character. <laughs> well, he has a lot of French techniques and. Oui. Yes. His yes. His fighting style names. We. Oui. Like, <laughs> and the no, cigarette but, is imported. Uh, I think Shonen Jump um, came out with his cooking book or his cookbook uh, like last week or so. And the units are in like hundreds of kilograms just because of Luffy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably. 200 um, kilograms of salt or uh, 200 kilograms of uh, peppers. But also because his dream is to find the all blue, maybe it's like something like like the sea. He'll smell like really refreshing like citrus tea ooh, ooh yes with ocean touches, I like, that like cool water or something like that ocean blue that's just, the, the just color a lot, a ocean lot blue of fish. All, all blue ocean, all blue all blue Sanji Sanji all blue I don't know if he's sad or or it's just you know the ocean <laughs> um, and last yeah but what about Luffy what are you talking about Me. what about Frankie yeah, what, about <laughs> what Frankie? are you talking about <laughs> just metal <sighs> Just gunmetal. <laughs> super. <laughs> super. He, oh, that, yeah. That's bro, the he title. smells super. That's the title. <laughs> you, super. Do you want to smell super? Splash some, some of this on your face. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up ten, three hours later. Where am I? <sighs> oh, man. Just I don't like, know. He might have like a synthetic type of cologne, right? Something that's not like oily. The, yeah. Like metal. No, no, no. Like no, no. Coca, 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 Coca. What's his drink? What's his drink again? Oh, Cola. Like, Cola. Yeah. That Cola could be scented true. cologne. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's his superpower. He uses that as a eau de burst or something. Yeah. Yeah. Cola oh, burst. Cola burst. Cola burst, right? Yeah. Um. Then Luffy. Oh, yeah, what's Luffy, it? right? Luffy what's just meat. <laughs> oh, what about Jinbei? Jinbei. Oh, the like, ocean. Um, <laughs> like we got two oceans. All fish. blue. All blue. All blue. All blue for Sanji. And now, what about uh, sushi Jin? for my man Jinbei? He he he, <clears throat> he smells like a delicate uh, omakase. I think. Oh yeah. You gotta that's come up with names like. though. But we already came no, up with the these name. names. Omakase. <laughs> Wait, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think <coughs> what what like <coughs> what other connection uh Jinbei has. He smells Cut. like freedom. <laughs> Where where's my freedom cologne? Woman, where's my freedom cologne? Um, what about, um like kara- he likes karate. You know, he's a figure probably. Isn't he a freedom. judo like a judo? Uh, no, fishman master? fishman judo. Fishman say. karate. Fishman oh, karate. Fishman karate. Mm. Yeah. Let's get fishy with it.
It yeah. smells like the sme- the sea breeze. In the smeat. <laughs> 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 oh no. Catch so yeah, these hands. Catch these Why hands. Why would you want to smell like that? <laughs> So yeah, Marcos, tell us your, your, your thoughts in the showers for some reason that you have. <laughs> Ooh, this music yeah. is just right. Yeah, yeah. Because the only music, the only thoughts I have in the shower is I need to clean myself. Well, and you I have need to hurry up. I guess. This was, you know, throughout wasting the week. Wasting water. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So you're wasting so much water while you think. You're like, can you think without having... Buckets and gallons of water just wasted. <laughs> just like, you know, let me shower. Let me think. <laughs> just take a shower. I found a solution. Not a right one, but it's a solution. <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, okay. So, uh, I don't know if this is a, a big secret or not, but I like anime, right? And I like anime related no, things. Do you? Yes. Well, I don't what? know. I, we got to question that because you like dub more than sub. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't say how I ingest my anime. I just said I like anime. He's like dub nation. <laughs> It's like saying you like soccer and you only like one soccer team, or you like football, you only like one football team. I mean, I like that's Keijo, kind of I like only one Keijo <laughs> character. No. Well, that's kind of is the thing. It wait, shouldn't wait. be. You only want like one of the characters. In that no, show? I like all. I like them all. Oh, okay. You like Keijo? Who? Exactly. So yeah. So I like you know to immerse myself into not only anime but also anime related stuff, and uh, you know some people might say doujins. I like to say podcast, right? Wait, and, what? Uh, <laughs> As you turn around <laughs> and look at your bookshelf? No, I do not. I plead the fifth. My 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 bookshelf is digital. Oh, I see. Anyways, <laughs> you know, this is a shout out to, you know, the uh, the anime cast or the Otaku Spirit podcast. I also, I um, throughout the week, I like to sh- share things with the squad. And I think I didn't share this one with, with you guys. I shared another one. <clears throat> but this one, it's just a snippet of uh, what I found interesting. In, and while I was in the shower, decided to analyze or so think. Wait, do, you, do you wash yourself clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> or do you like do like a like a cross? Scrub a dub dub. Yes. Okay. That doesn't answer my question. <laughs> yeah, right. Just uh, as a reference, uh, the, you know, if you guys, the listeners, like to listen to the podcast as well, uh, this episode is called, you know, the anime cast. Netflix. Netflix anime steps up in the face of Sony. You know, there's a link here in the show notes. But in my case, that that's for you listen if you want to listen to it. And uh, I want to talk about a specific thing that they said, and I took it my own path in the shower. Thus, the shower thought. It says, um, "What is the potential, the ten-year, the ten-year forecast of the anime industry?" In their case, uh, their idea was that any anime studio, big or small, can be distributed. They can hire or get distribution services on a studio to studio basis meaning that uh there will be a a, a, dem- a supply more or less or a service that enables like um <clears throat> uh full tip portable uh what is gynax uh gonzo i don't know if that one's around anymore uh but to them from a studio to studio basis to get a more or less a website and get a a distribution platform for their listeners like an only fans that's what it comes to my mind and you know the the viewers to support the studio and they um that's the forecast you know, there's there's other websites other than only fans that does the same thing but this was the one that we were talking about that came to my head <laughs> to my to my top head if you will you know mm. Mm. so yeah my idea and there i that's their idea right and they clarified that this could potentially be in quotations a disruptor technology or service in my head it came to be more like a service right is that is that these can be a uh, convenient simple and with nowadays or more recently uh secure enough for every anime studio to use now in other words to publish and distribute their products with the support of their viewers worldwide using the internet you know in other words ironically there is a company that's a trailblazer with this service or method this method that can potentially become into a service in the future 
<clears throat> within the 10 years this is my my idea that i wanted to go down <clears throat> that i wanted to go down basically now but this technique still needs to be ironed out if you will to uh be improved there's a lot of hiccups that this company had historically that you do not want other companies like uh you know foldable to have even though there's services like funimation there's a uh, crunch roll there's uh anime anime high dive or something like that called sony's you know getting bought funimation funimation you know bought crunch roll and all those things you know we all know that nowadays so uh what what do you call that when other companies are are, um, are acquiring they're acquiring all these other services that created a reputation and the customer base you may not be happy with them i may not be happy with them and you know they're doing their thing to survive i don't blame them but what i'm saying is specifically from the base to contact the anime studios and try to get them a service or, or there be a, a service that they can distribute their products on a periodic basis of course they could also have contracts to distribute onto the tv onto the tv in japan because you know that's a that's a national entertainment system, uh, service that they provide inside the country but for the rest of the world or within japan it's in itself they could also provide a, a distribution service online <clears throat> now uh so yeah the historically that i that comes to my mind the name of this uh this company is called rooster teeth ironically every one of the the creators of rooster teeth uh understood the internet in the early 90s you know and uh wanted to to create something some of them even uh, decided to leave their studies uh their studies to go and try to make their million their millions online <clears throat> because there was a back in the day in the early 90s there was one website that would charge like a it was a one dollar per pixel just to place ads and this website was called the million dollar website a web page if you if you can imagine that whoever created that web page on average earned a million dollars that's just crazy to me and now with now the service specifically with rooster teeth is known for red versus more or less red versus blue and uh creating two movies i don't i um there what is it uh who yeah who but yeah no, um back in the day in the early 90s early 2000 they were known for creating red versus blue and having a lot a lot of problems oh, no, no, you, you got you got your time on next up yes in, in the late 19 in the late 1990s they yes. were non-existent yeah and then in the early 2000s they were still non-existent 2002 they started and then existing mid, and then like mid to to late then they said existing do you, can you do a, a look up when they started exist uh they actually had another company before rooster teeth they called it drunk gamers but we're just talking about rooster teeth yeah i'm just saying that uh that technique to distribute services or entertainment online they paid it out of pocket and they didn't get anything out of it for since the early early since 2000 they had that for two years and so they were founded 2003 yes and when did the first episode of uh of red versus blue release uh uh let me see red versus blue boo boo <laughs> boo release date hmm april <laughs> april first i was to see it was a joke <laughs> they know 2000, that 2003 though yeah they know their demographic of people but yeah, oh, so, so actually, the day they were founded was the day Red vs. Blue came out. Yeah, but can you imagine that? Who who thought of Crunchyroll? Who thought of Netflix in those days? They I were did. the. You did. Yeah, you did. You thought. Well, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. I gave the, them source code. And then, if you if you want to imagine their founders, who were their first founders? Me. Of uh, Red Red vs. Blue, or, yeah. or Rooster Teeth, uh, the founders of Rooster Teeth ironically worked on in a internet service provider for the for the country and they understood how the back end worked of the in, of the internet interwebs interwebs if you will yes and uh, for example there's a short story one of again if you guys want to listen to another podcast called the rooster teeth podcast there's a recent Don't, episode please. yeah right <laughs> stop, Don't. stop promoting right but yeah uh they they said that uh this one of the main guys called Gus. maybe 
Gus um, worked for this internet provider service, and he on a daily basis, all of these all of these guys had already worked for this company for 10 years, a minimum of 10 years. And it was at the point where Gus would go around the country just helping them with the backend servers, rebooting, security patching, all those things in the early to mid 2000s. And, the, and um, more or less, long story short, they have a, an intimate understanding of uh, servers and distribution services or entertainment for our thing here in anime. And that's what I want to, you know, more or less quote, see as a, as a service that can, you know, not only provide a, make it easier, more or less technology, make it easier for, for animes or at an, an, a reasonable price to get there. Because there's a fan base, not only in Japan, but around the world. You know, there's there were pirate sites. And how many pirate sites are there compared to like Kiss Anime? Uh, what was the other one? It used to be Naruto.com. It used to be Dragon Ball Z.com. One Piece.com. Bleach.com. Those used to be out there. In the early 2010, 2011, that, that was my website when I wanted to go to the library. I'm like, you know what? Let's see the late. I didn't even want to see the ep- latest episodes. I just wanted to see, the, you know, what I grew up with. And then from there, I found that there were more episodes. That was in the thick of it when um, in Naruto, when they were starting the, <clears throat> the, the travel to the island for him to master his, uh, his beast mode, if you will, his uh, sage mode. And uh, but yeah, so that's what I'm long story short. That's what I'm trying to say is that uh, I want to see that service to be provided specifically to the creators of anime and I'll not only be held another revenue stream besides licensing and all those things or a, an easier way for for users. And hopefully another industry could follow behind that of uh, uh, that companies can dub to other countries, uh, to other languages, not only English, you know them directly they could potentially hire and at a standardized method that could you know increase competition at the end of the day my my, my long story short is like i want more competition now I don't, i'm not kind of liking what's going on it's nice and all those things i grew up watching through funimation and you know and anim- kiss anime and all those places but now i'm worried i'm worried and that's my tech talk thoughts and you're fired from what <laughs> exactly <laughs> who um, decided this who signed it i i signed this what no oh well i guess that's it it's official tissue no but yeah i think i think we're yes. in good hands right now because that's it's a, a market a market disruptor providing an entirely different service. They use the example of Netflix, how they it cut off the competition with Blockbuster. I'm like, hmm, now how can you compete against, you know, Funimation, Netflix, all those things? Go straight to the source with the studios and provide them a reasonable service where they could get a revenue stream on the side, you know, double dip. Double dip? That's unless, disgusting. Unless Netflix and Funimation and Sony sign with the studios a non-compete clause, you know. Maybe. What do you think, Alan? I think I am falling asleep. I'm like, um, <laughs> I don't even know, bro. To be quite honest, nothing to. And that's okay. No problem. And Mr. J, what about you? I think that's it for me too. That's it for you? No. Okay, let's go for anime then. One more thing. As he whips out his can. Welcome, Welcome to the. Yes. Like you cut, G. was a long one always yes. a classic always a classic love that one so dubs Wait. you know what do you guys think <laughs> terrible <Absolutely what>? not. <laughs> no i was more concerned about things that i've been hearing is like the comparison between oh uh, well going back a little bit on crunchyroll or funimation buying up crunchyroll right and how that's going to affect uh, people that are uh, Crunchyroll subscribers 
Oh, just that, and yeah. No, not only that, but like, even in the lead up, right? There was uh, a video from James Hansen where he was explaining how the actual uh, provider or country role was raising prices or I think the issue started because or one of the major issues was they had some sort of show that Crunchyroll was going to not only produce but put it on 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 the actual website so people could watch that had nothing to do with anime like and, and he was basically just explaining how how is it that people are paying for the service and they use the money instead of going out of their way to go to Japan and, and source the the source material or you know getting or buying up IPs or intellectual properties in order for them to actually show uh, anime here or build up their catalog they want to create their own fake you know like Cartoon Network-esque type of cartoons stuff like that and it and we ain't talking about no Billy and Mandy right he was just like furious he's like it's crazy how how that that type of uh, narrative is being pushed in, in in that um in at Crunchyroll, and then I I think I sent you um, the video also, and I think I did it not too long ago. Um, how Funimation will phase out Crunchyroll at some point, if not this year, next year, and um, everything will be under that one umbrella of Funimation. What about Verb? VRV, uh, remember that? Yeah, again, I don't know, but he was going on the lines where going along with with uh, maybe just having Funimation and Verve or putting everything under one umbrella and eliminating everything. So, yeah. That's no good. No good. You know, there, there's yeah. a lack of competition right there. Uh, there sure is. There's Not that's what I'm saying. Someone, you know, should come on by and talk straight with the with the photables. The footable? Photables? The is Gon- Fo- Gonzo. F- UFO table? UFO table and uh, what about uh is Gonzo still around? No. I have no idea who that is. Or or Studio Bones. I don't know. It could be up for I debate. Don't know. The amount of, of negotiating and stuff like that with not only production companies but licensing and everything else like uh, I have no clue how they would go about doing that I know besides Funimation now their competition is uh, Netflix Amazon Hulu. Prime <laughs> isn't Whoever, Hulu owned yeah. by Disney technically so Disney I in the bigger picture so. and Disney right so those are like the major players but again you would have to you would have to see like whatever um, Sony doesn't buy up the other they're gonna have to compete right with the other com- bigger companies which makes it harder for the little companies to actually compete because they and then the workers suffer well yeah they're, that, they're already that's suffering a, now yeah that's a yeah that's a whole different situation but yeah I mean I, I, I hope that things will get better I just want like diversification of competition you know or just that, there be more competition a better a better catalog because I heard that Worlds Worlds and Harem was uh, postponed no from Crunchyroll because I think it was along the same lines of uh, interspecies reviewers where it's a little too raunchy or whatever the case is so they're postponing it till next year I think January dang or, I don't know. You already know don't, that. Don't remember. Since uh, Interspecies Reviewers wasn't W, I haven't watched it. You already know that, right? Yes. I'm aware. Dang it. Dang it. And then Funimation bought it. Dang it. Crunchyroll, why? Again, He's like, why you play with me? Well, that the thing is that... What's it called? Funimation bought a Crunchyroll, so I'm pretty sure that whatever... <laughs> you know round table meeting they had at headquarters they probably kind of like did the same thing and was and was like whoa this doesn't represent our way of thinking and whatnot and it's like yo shut up our and values just, 
What values? Exactly. It's anime. What values? They're gonna if if they're saying that they're exclusively there to to put out the content. Put out, you like, say. Don't get, yeah. Don't, don't give me this garbage of oh it doesn't align with our like get out of here with that BS. So Kato made it out just in time. You mean? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Ooh. I, I I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess he says. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You're right. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm disappointed with Funimation. Well, enough of this. <laughs> enough of this. Yes, it's time. It's time. For something I don't know. <laughs> so I, I recently saw the du- latest dub episode of of the slime. Stop. Wait a minute. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's good. That's my only series that I've been watching right now. I have to ad- admit, I'm still waiting for the dubbing of the Moshoku Tensei season two. Yo, Moshoku Tensei, oh, it's fire, bro! Oh my goodness! Episode one came out already. Dub. It is absolutely. You, you and I agree. You and I agree on this. Yes, and then Arifureta, I understand. I'll, I'll wait for you. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> oh, have you guys been watching? Uh, what's it called World's Best Assassin? Oh, hold up, I'll be back. I'm gonna use some bathroom real quick. Yes. Hold up. Imagine he takes his microphone with him. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, no, so World's Greatest Assassin, I think it's called. It's also a really, really good show that I'm watching this season that I highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm letting all the shows stack because uh, there, there's pretty you. good ones. Yeah, there's pretty good ones out there. So uh, I'm like watching uh, older shows that I don't know what that says about you and I and that we 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 are rewatching past ups of me because it's already dubbed. But you know, I feel like you know you and I are kin in that sense for the different for different reasons. Yes, absolutely. No, it's because I don't want I I have that <clears throat> that I guess you can say uh unquenchable thirst to watch thirst, the next you say. episode yes to watch the next episode but when you're all caught up you can't do that and it makes me kind of sad so I'd rather just let it stack in, and then in your order. schedule your, your 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 work schedule and life schedule and I just yeah and then I I, I watch the, the episodes from like I'll watch maybe like maybe the first two to three episodes of the season and then let it stack just so I get a better idea of what the show is about and you know then then I'll be more invested in, in each show because I have like at least two or three episodes you know down that kind of got me hooked into that show or whatever so question are you in the sense that you're not in, uh, uh, like oh I saw the, the first release episode I want to see more you're not that kind of individual of viewer of anime you're like oh let, I saw the I saw the, I heard that this anime is coming out. Let me wait until more. You know, I'm not I'm, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. OK, let me watch at least three episodes or four episodes. Wouldn't you say then that the Netflix kind of style would be more to your fitting style of watching? Uh, not really, because I mean, to I can point. do either either or. But I, I do like the. Um, I do. I, I like the way that it's scheduled now on Crunchyroll, or just the the way it regularly airs on television in Japan, and then we get it over here through paid subscriptions services, right? Yes. Um, I, I like that model a little a little bit better because, like, say you you do feel the need to watch maybe episode four in order for you to actually you know um be interested yeah yeah be interested or get hooked on the actual show well you have the option to actually watch four and five and six you know once they start coming out but with the netflix um uh, way of doing things you literally have to wait until the whole season comes out in order for you to actually watch it and and by that time it's like season's over or i don't know how uh netflix schedules yes. their yes. their shows but i'm pretty sure that's how it goes especially for anime when it's like more of a time sensitive type of thing where 
other people are, are probably already watched it, right? And then you have to wait until the season is over until uh, for you to actually watch the whole season in its entirety. Now, my question is, since you let it stack, you don't let it stack until like the, se- the season's over. You're more of a of a one. OK, I heard this online of oh, people are really liking it or do you, you don't even listen to people reviewing them before you watch it. You just like the, 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 the commercial and you just go in and, you know, yeah, you, if, you, I, mm-hmm. if, I, if I see like uh, some promotional video trailers of, um, yeah of the actual show and it piques my interest i'll say yeah there there might be a time where i'm watching you know something online and they have a a promotion or a promotional video or they just you know shout out the show because like they enjoy the show and kind of piques my interest i'll go out of my way to do a little research of okay maybe i want to see the the promotional video or whatnot um and i'll make my decision of you know watching the first episode or maybe the first two to even three episodes to get myself acquainted with the actual show but after that i let it stack till you know episode if it's like a, a 12 episode uh season um show i usually wait until like nine and then i'll start watching from you know from like if i watch only the first episode so then i'll watch two to nine or two to seven um and then obviously i'll have more shows so i'll do maybe two episodes of one show then two episodes of another show and two episodes of another show and then wait until all everything gets up to 12 and then you know just knock them out by two episodes per you day know, until i'm caught up your style sounds way more disciplined than i thought you know even even more than netflix netflix like i feel like this technique they should follow on netflix for anime well and, the, the thing yeah. is the thing is that the reason i i do it that way and not you know to the letter of like oh it has to be either to a point uh, to a right but the reason I do, uh, like, say I, I have five shows that I'm watching this season that I really enjoy out of like the, I don't know how many, like maybe 20 uh, or 10 or 20 uh, or shows 50, that come out. Yeah. yeah, whatever the case is, right? In the season, I'll I'll have like that small group of shows. Like maybe I pick out four or five shows that I want to actually watch and I'll let stack. So again trying to go through you know 12 times 5 right it, you can start seeing that those episodes are going to add up right so for me to not be plunged in the dark hole of staying in in, in one place watching episode after episode like it starts becoming a chore instead of something that i enjoy you know never and usually that. never lose that right so what i try to do is like I'll get myself something to eat, get my nice drink on, and then enjoy two episodes while I eat my meal, and then you know leave the 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 rest of the sh- the episodes for you know maybe tomorrow or maybe for the weekend. That way, you know I pick something else to eat for for that time that I allocate for watching the shows that I want. So I'll do like two episodes of like maybe the five shows, right? So, or something like that. Or I'll pick three shows and I'll watch two episodes of that. Uh, and I'll get something to eat and then enjoy my time there and enjoy it. And really just relax and have a good time doing that. So that's how I go about it. But I mean, yeah, but I definitely try to stack the, the episodes so I don't find myself getting to the good part and saying oh man i now i gotta wait a whole week in order for me to to watch the next episode if i really if i really want to watch the next episode because something was like the story was really good at at some point and i i i gotta get my fix like i'll have an episode that i uh, like extra a couple episodes i can actually rely on or or actually watch and, and not feel guilty that oh I, I i watched more than three episodes or whatever the case is you know 
And um, another thing is that you, 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 the first episode is really going to be the hook the cat that catches you at the beginning of the entire series. For in the general terms, it's, it's the trailer, the intro, more or less. Besides the trailers, and if you're interested enough to even watch the first episode, then you're going to be you you're, with your technique. You're guaranteeing yourself an entertainment. Not you're not feeling yourself tied down. You can continue with your life because like. You know, for, for for we're continuing with our lives and all those things, but we still we still are anime fans, okay? And we don't forget, you know, to watch what cat what we want to watch. And as an industry, you know, there's a lot of variety, and for good or for worse, we can choose what we want to watch, and we're not obligated to just watch all of it, at, all of it, you know, on a, on a weekly basis. With your style, you know, you can dedicate time listen to watch the trailers or, or the my anime list do they know uh, what the my anime list description <clears throat> and see what you like and of course i know from you and i me being in your in your place that you don't only have anime you have manga and you know that's your form of yeah. entertainment yeah and for me unless it's Stand like a, back. <laughs> yes <laughs> everything marco back. said about dubbing is wrong <laughs> no, I was I'm talking about mangas. Say, oh, I'm glad oh, you no. didn't say a word about <laughs> dubs. Um, for as for mm. me, if it's a series I really enjoy and I want to read it, like for me, the only to collect. <laughs> You're looking around if I can hear it in your microphone. No, yeah, I'm looking at, at the Food Wars uh, manga that I have stacked here. That's the only series I have in almost in its whole entirety like that i've bought but if i need to read something and i don't know maybe it was like during the summer this year uh i started i started uh reading manga from from what's it called from i want to see a shonen jump so i bought the subscription for like a dollar every month or something like that or a dollar and some change yeah and i'll, I'll occasionally go through and watch like uh shokugeki no sanji right so i'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll read the cross that array up, yeah. yeah yeah or i'll try to get like myself acquainted with what what's happening in uh, dr stone or something like that so he's still getting it, stoned yes he definitely is and that's how I, i'll consume manga in that way but it's because and I think I, I mentioned it in the our podcast when we had Israel and Monse as special guests, where it, it just, for me, there's not a lot of space where I'm at. So for me to fill up the room, or my, my place with just more manga or something like that would not make any, any sense. Cause then it's not I, feasible. Yeah. If for me, I'd rather have it digitally, unless I really love the series where, you know, I, I really enjoyed the Food Wars series and I want to collect a whole, you know, collection of manga volumes. Like, I'll do that and just say, oh, look, I do have a complete set of this show that I or this series that I really enjoy. I really like the art. I really like the story. I like the premise. I like the whole food aspect about it. And, you know, that's why I have the whole collection. Um, what I've been getting into right now as of recent has been anime figure collecting, which is a very expensive hobby I've been noticing. And, um, it, but I really like the, the characters that I've been able to acquire and, and buy. And, um, yeah, so I, I have to really choose my battles as far as, you know, how much space I have and, you know, not buying certain things that would probably take away from my living arrangement or space here but um yet uh I, I think that for going back to like the episodes or or anime that i watch I'll, I'll try to stack as much as i can and then just you know knock them out a little by little that way i i can actually enjoy it and not make it into a chore and something that i actually enjoy yeah. Hmm. So talk about anime that you could watch. I got some recommendations, oh, Mr. J. And that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna yes. ask you, like, for Alan and I, like, my technique almost not mimics, but is a closer to Alan's, which is like 
uh, uh, like um, I try to watch. For me, it's one specific series though, just one, and I let I continue on with my whatever I do in life, and then they come back to it but because Marcus, Marcus, because here's they the wait for the dubbing, but, which is but, wrong. But here's, I understand. Here's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Is that you I wait understand for the it's wrong, but you know, I chew, I put my poison. But, like I'm, st- but I'm still waiting Marcus, for the Marcus. for the interspecies reviewers. But anyways, Mr. J, how do you? Sh- I'm never gonna happen. But how are you, how do you? More or less, choose your animes per season. Uh, with love and support. <laughs> love and support. <laughs> uh, but for, first, let me let me just break something. Let me just spill some news real for quick. Jesus. I did not say that. I uh, mean, for a host way. Yes, of course, me. Before we we dive into that little fiasco over there, uh, just some announcements is that uh, Netflix. I don't know if you guys know this. Netflix is making. Uh, a live action remake of One Piece. I, yeah, they can't, I heard, they can't, it can't I be. Heard. I'm I'm going to be a negative Nancy over here, and I feel like anime but, can't be turned into a live medium for now. And and they've also released the the cast of yeah. Uh-oh. A lot of people of, had something the, to say about that. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay. So me me personally, I think these are great. Like people like people that are coming. I think they portray them pretty well. And the rubber. So, so, like I said, I, I mean, no, well, no, I said, so I'm gonna start off saying I don't know any of any of these actors personally or even their works. Um, but I feel I can I can see them portraying uh, the the character. So uh, they have, let's say, they have uh, they have they have a good selection of things. But um, you know, of course, like like Marco was, was aiming at, you know, live action certain animes don't don't really do well. Ghost in the Shell. I see that. I, I don't think any Low any live angel. action. I don't think any live action anime adaptation has done well. Um, uh, what about Death Note? Death Note wasn't even full on. D- Death Note didn't even do that great. Yeah, or 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 uh, Full Metal <laughs> Alchemist. Yeah, no, it didn't do that great either. <laughs> I think the only one that was okay, not great or spectacular, but that was. Pretty well received was the Roroni Kenshin one, right? Because Roroni Kenshin is a so. reference to past of Japanese history, and they're just re-referencing it. That's why it yeah. kind of. But more anyway, or less... though, if if you wanna, <laughs> okay. if you wanna I take mean, a look but at, but they had they had like supernatural strength. Let's be serious. Mm. Yeah. You're not gonna have, you know, Potosa the Manslayer. You know, slice ten people in one fell swoop. I mean, that's not very historical. Yeah, only I can yeah. do that. That's more lore than anything else, right? What? Yeah. Holy sword, Mr. J. You know? Basically. <laughs> but yeah, but if you, I, mean, if you, I was going to uh-huh, say, like, if you want to take a look at the cast, they're, they're there. It's in the show notes. Ooh. Um, It's in the link. So, but yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Uh, I think yeah, I did so. share with you guys something else, right? I think... Uh, the new people, I think, were able to order or pre-order, if not today, it was yesterday, um, the tickets for the new Sword Art Online. A live action? No, no, no. no. Oh. Oh. The, the anime, the movie. And I think even before then, I, 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 I'm trying to remember, was it um, Boku no Hero movie, right? I think they already came out. Yeah, that did. Yeah, that one came out like maybe what last month? I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. And I think they have something else scheduled. I think it's the Jujutsu Kaisen, right? Movie? Yeah, that's coming out I, next year. Is it a live yeah. action or is it just an no? Anime? It's no, a no. movie. It's the movie. It's a movie. An OVA. <clears throat> no, it's part of the story. Okay. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion that they might also have a. Shoko Tensei movie coming out again. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm, I'm fantasy. Wiling. Yeah, I can, I can I can imagine fantasy because generally speaking, it's it's magic. I've Lord of the Rings. What other one? Um, I feel like Lord of the Rings is my best example. And, with the uh, that's, of magic. and I'm gonna stop you right there, Marcus. <laughs> of magic. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna stop you right there. Okay, it's you uncle do that. magic. Um, <laughs> because before that. I have here some anime recommendations of the current season that's okay. out about, you know, because we love yes. it here. Marcos, I see you've highlighted things. Love to hear it. 
Uh, okay, so the first up in the list um, is not dubbed, which is great. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's an man, honest no. travesty over here. It's for me. But, you no, know, it's amazing. Who's... It's called uh, <clears throat> The Far Away Paladin. Now, I don't know if any of you heard this, but this is like... This is like a hidden gem, I think, because this is this isn't like really? the genre. Give me the genre. Let's see. Let me hear the genre. Hey, 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 shh, shh, just sit down, relax. Shh, no, shh, but, but, shh, 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 just relax, oh. relax. Just, just, just. Yeah. Uh, just but, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um okay. So I'm gonna give you the synopsis. So all of these have the my enemy list link. Those I'm gonna give you the synopsis. Yes. <laughs> oh you, no, I'm, Jesus! I'm gonna give you the the synopsis. Now, uh, some background. I think this was You're gonna make me um, testify. I think this was a light novel originally. Uh, so yeah. So it's uh, born into a new world after a life of stagnancy. Will awakens in the face of a skeleton, a ghost, and a mummy. Uh, living in the ruins of the city long fallen, the three raise Will as their own. The skeleton, blood, teaches him how to fight. Uh, the ghost, go, uh, <laughs> ghost Gus, <laughs> teaches him magic. And the mummy, Mary, teaches him religion and responsibility. <coughs> Most importantly, they all teach him love. As Will grows up, and learns about the world he was born into. He prepares for the day he must finally set out on his own. For Will, the journey includes a lifelong promise at their coming of age. Every adult is required to swear an oath to the god of their choice. Uh, with the strength of the, ple of the pledge affecting the degree of their sworn god to blessing. With his departure approaching, uh, Will must prepare to accept the truth of his undead guardians. And embark into a world that even they don't know the state of uh will discovers however that every oath must be fulfilled one way or another so yeah so so my description is amazing uh so the main character is called will um he gets uh we he gets so that's not his full name but for for like half of the series right now because they just gave him his full name he's been called will uh now he's called william g uh mary blood uh, because it was a little little thing because Mary was his mom blood was his dad figures and then Gus Ain't is no like thing, his, 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 like his, his, uh, his weird grandfather I'm telling you it's gonna make you testify not really it's it's um uh, what's the what's the genre I forget it's like no <laughs> it's not it's there is no edgy in this fantasy uh yeah it's like don't, yeah, don't action tell, action adventure and fantasy don't tell me it's isekai so so well no it's not isekai um well is grows up with uh just blood who is this was i think the greatest warrior mary was like the greatest healer and gus was like the greatest magician so the mummy is uh, the greatest warrior no the mummy is the greatest healer oh. blood is the greatest warrior and Gus was the greatest um, magician. Magi. So they all teach him their 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 suits. So he learns, like she, they said, uh, blood teaches him how to fight. Um, the, the Mary teaches him about religion, and then also like uh, prayers that can help him a little bit. Uh, and then Gus teaches him like magic. And so, what's a paladin? Uh, Where are you telling him to fight religion and magic? Well, I mean, they a call paladin it paladin. Itself? Well, I can't explain that because they didn't explain it here in the series. So, but in, let me look it up. Well, you continue. Sorry. Uh, as I'm like, ignore that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's I think it's a really good story because, yeah, you know, one one thing, like they said, they teach him love. Uh, you know, one thing that story. Yes, it's a great story. Uh, they teach him. I like it's 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 sort of like like a like a you see this guy grow up and how he's, he grows up. Um, you know, even though it's it's kind of weird because, like they say, it's a skeleton, a mummy, and some ghost. Um, sounds like it's a, got the, like a video game right there. Walk up, no, walk up, walk up, walk up. But yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a hidden gem, and I think everyone should watch it. Not not the the weird thing they pulled they pulled out <laughs> of uh, out of nowhere. You know, I forgot what the show was called. It's, it was like something spice. 
Uh, but Spice and Wolf? Inst- instead of that, watch <laughs> the, f- the Faraway Paladin. Because that one's really good. It's up to episode 6. Um, Is it dubbed? No, of course not. Oh. I don't think it's going to be dubbed. <laughs> and that's great. That's even perfect. More perfect. That's great. But yeah. Not, not for me, though. Like if and if I would give it a rating, um, I'll probably give it like an eight point five. Well, here that's it's just eight point three nine. That's that's why I said my rating. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, so continue on to the next one. It is a long one. Uh, banished from the hero's party, I decided to live a quiet life in the countryside. Uh, so uh, here's a synopsis. The f- uh, far away from the reaches of demons and war, near the borderland of Zoltan, D-rank adventurer Red lives in a normal existence. Through perseverance and a weird pop-up, <laughs> uh, perseverance and hard work, his dream of starting his own apothecary th- and peaceful life in the countryside finally came true. Basically, it's the it's, uh, it's a place he sells. It's like a pharmacy. CBS? Abruptly. Yes. Abruptly, Red gets a life long life in live in partner uh, partner, an assistant named Rit. The better uh, the darkness, p- no? Okay, shh, shh. Just just to stay in your little corner. Uh the princes of <laughs> I said Deutsche. Uh yeah, Deutsche. And the an adventure herself. Who gives everything up to join him? Although what? honest, she gives kind what and up? love shh. Stay, stay in your little cage of corner, Marcos. Uh, Red has a secret shared only with Rit. His real name is uh, Gideon, uh, brother of Rudy, the <laughs> hero, and the former member of her party. Uh, er- Ares Drawa, Drawa, the sage, kicked Red out of their party and their war against the demon lord after deciding he was weak and insignificant. Now, even... Though Red has left the hero's party behind by assuming a new life together with Rit, he had his past has yet to let him go. So yeah, it's um, it's literally just him, uh, you know, going by his life. Uh, uh, Rit is also there with Gideon. Uh, it's, I feel like it's like one of those animes that it's good for this season. It's wholesome, but like it's what genre is it? Fantasy? Uh, no. It's adventure, fantasy, romance, and slice of life. Okay, okay. So yeah, um, it it feels it feels uh it feels uh it makes you feel good. One of these Mm. type of animes. But yeah, I mean, I and I think the score over here, my list is pretty accurate. I would give it like around a seven. Uh, it's it's a pretty good uh, anime to watch for this season. <laughs> Next on the list is I think everyone <laughs> we've talked about this one. Uh, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated into another world as an aristocrat. Crap. Uh, so the synopsis is I'm going to live for myself. The greatest assassin on Earth, on Earth, all knew only how to live as a tool for his employers until they stopped. Uh, letting him live reborn by the grace of a goddess into a world of swords and sorcery he offered a chance he was offered a chance to do things differently this time around but it's a catch he has to eliminate a super powerful hero who will bring and uh bring about the end of world unless he has stopped known uh, oh no now known as lug uh tothody uh, the master, That's a hard name. <laughs> the master assassin, certainly has his hands full, particularly because of all the beautiful girls who constantly surround him. Uh, Luke may have been an in- uh, incomparable killer, but now he will be fair against foes with powerful magic. <laughs> this so has yeah, to be harem, so partly harem at least. This I think it is a harem because there's a lot of girls. Uh, let me see. Oh, no, it's not one of the genres. I don't know if they have it there, though. It's, it's a harem. Drum roll, please. But, no, it's not. <laughs> oh. But yeah, he uh, gets ring. One thing I like, the um, the goddess does kind of explain his enemy, who is the hero. Um, we learned that... Th- what we learned from the first episode is that the hero will eventually become evil 
and that's the why ultimate he, evil, yeah. That's why he then destroys the world. So <laughs> he has to go up, up against him. So here's the thing: uh, everyone is are born with skills. I think the average is around like two, and the hero has thirty. This is the power and level, and they rank all of the skills. Yes, and he has five S rank skills. So S being the top. Yes, and then the other twenty five are different ranks. Um, for him, he only had choice of five uh, skills, so he chose I think one of each rank. So an S rank, A rank, B, uh, C, and then the D. Why didn't he make all of the mess? So then, no, he can't. Ooh. So, and he also has the the abilities of all the different uh, nature attributes. So then, um. He is put into like this like noble family of assassins as well. <laughs> and um he has to then train and figure out a plan to kill the assassin. Mind you though, that we learned that this no, ain't the, the hero, first the person this ain't the first person the goddess is is hired to kill a hero. <laughs> hired, it seems like hired you say. It seems like she's done it with other worlds to kill the hero for the same reason. But either yeah. a, either a the hero uh the person she hires gets lazy and does nothing or they do try to do it but they get killed in the process mm. so for I now you know sneaking suspicion that the goddess is the evil doer in this show maybe just maybe maybe just on the, something I feel like something is irking me here though I have I have something irking me is oh um, on the, and two things let me let me let me pull back hold up question what genre is this don't worry about it does it say there yes can you tell me maybe is Why? one of the isekai no oh yeah, yeah it is dang it should have been fantasy it I mean it's fan- literally in the it's literally in the title yeah Reincarnated It's it's literally Isekai Is Isekai a reincarnation? Yeah I feel like reincarnation is something else versus Isekai Uh, I think you are thinking it too much You know what I'm saying But hey, more power to them My world, I mean (laughs) I'm just being over here I'm being picky over here About pet peeve My bad Yes You should get spanked again Wait, what? (laughs) So the next one is Uh the fruit of evolution before i knew it i had uh, i had my life i had my life handed to me oh no sorry before <laughs> i knew it my life had it made there you go imagine you said i had my ass handed to me <laughs> <laughs> uh so so okay so one day a man claiming to be a god suddenly hacks a certain a certain school's intercoms ordering <laughs> all of the students to t- and prepare to be transported to another world. There, they will be given special skills in the hope that they will become the world's heroes and defeat the demon lord, demon king, that ravages the land. The initial transfer success, however, uh, Seichi, who suffers from his classmates' constant bullying due to his somewhat undesirable appearance, is left behind as no one is willing to be his teammate. Nevertheless, a self, the self-proclaimed god decides to send Seichi to the parallel world and let him join his peers. Unfortunately, the faithful ordeal causes Seichi to arrive, to arrive at a location deep in the forest. Far not only from his schoolmates, but from, his, from, from uh, human civilization as well. Desperately searching for a way to change his predicament, Seiji miser- uh, Seiji's miserable days only seem to continue to worsen. Yet when all hope seem- seems lost, Seiji discovers a strange fruit known as the fruit of evolution, which may be his first step towards a significantly better future. Dot dot dot. So basically, he gets girls. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, yeah. So oh, so basically, no. um. As you it's should. kind of like a l- like should. a level Amen. up system. So, so after each fight and encounter, he gets certain skills. For some reason, he can copy the skills uh, of of the people he fights. So he got like. <laughs> Sounds like on the only dungeon I can I can you know the only not dungeon really, enemy. Nah, I don't yeah, think kind so. Of, kind of. 
And then the spider one, uh, I I reincarnated well, I as a spider. I don't know about the spider one, but I think I think this one's a little bit different from the dungeon one, just because of, of, of the power system it goes. Because like this guy has <laughs> face for some reason he's faced people like uh, be above right and back. beyond stronger than him, and he's won against them. Just it's like those pure luck situations. Oh, okay. And he okay, also like has a monkey. Spin-off. He also has a monkey as a girlfriend. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Who turns into a girl? <clears throat> of course, as you do. There had to be the monkey, the monkey girl. There's already cat girls. There's already fox girls. There's already chicken girls. Wait, there's chicken girls? A lizard girls. There's already dragon girls. I think you've been reading too many dojins. <clears throat> Arifureta. Yeah, you've been reading too many dojins. There's already bunny girls. That's always been there. I'm just saying there had to be a monkey girl, which is what a step, right, all, a so step away now, from a human. The last one. The last one is, is actually a Netflix exclusive. So you can only watch it on Netflix. What is it? Comey can't communicate? Yes. Of course. Exactly. Uh, and we're done. Huh? <laughs> and it's I'm great. It's amazing. It's been great. It's, uh, there's a pop up for some reason trying to tell me to get onto this catalog, but no. Guess uh, the dub. So Hisohito is, is an ordinary boy. Oh, Tan. Tadano. Yeah, Tadano. I'm going to call him Tadano. That last thing is weird. He's an ordinary boy who he's who heads into his first day of high school with a clear plan to avoid trouble and do his best to blend in with others. Unfortunately, he falls right away. He, yeah, he falls right away when he takes the seat beside the school, uh, Madonna. Komi. His peers now recognize him as someone to eliminate for a chance to sit next to the most beautiful girl in class. Gorgeous, graceful, with long dark hair, Komi is universally adored and immensely popular despite her mysterious persona. However, unbeknownst to everyone, she has a crippling anxiety and communication disorder which prevents her from wholeheartedly socializing socializing with her classmates when left alone in classroom a chain of events fo- forces Komi to interact with Tadano through writing on the blackboard as if a <laughs> one way conversation being the first person to realize she can't com- she cannot communicate properly Tadano picks up the chalk and begins to write as well he eventually discovers that Komi's goal is to make 100 friends during her time in high school to this end he decides to lend her a helping hand Thus, also becoming her first ever friend. Mm. And no, this is not a harem. I got comments. <laughs> I got comments. Oh no! Oh and no! A, a side note. A side note. Yes. The person who voices Tadano is also has also voiced the has also voiced Asta from Black Clover and Shinra from Fire Force. In the dub. So so from 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 that alone, that's automatically like amazing. In the dub or in no, the sub? sub? In the original Japanese. We don't talk about that uh, that unholiness, that dub. So there, you're yeah. saying there's a dub then? There is no dub. Damn, Netflix, you're letting me down. <laughs> Netflix, they, they know better. They're like, yeah, we don't want to do this anymore. They had a good, you know, a good repertoire of dubbing. <laughs> yeah, but they're like, no. This is but too yeah, good. It's, uh... Like I said, it's pretty good. I think it has up to four episodes now in Netflix. Is they're actually doing it by like every week now, so every week on Thursday it comes out on Netflix, which is like unheard of. And this is a new style. I, I, I again, they could have gone halfway the the uh, since Island style. They're gonna also do this style for uh, you know, JoJo. JoJo, you say? Yes, JoJo is also going to be a Netflix exclusive. Exclusive, dang it. Okay. So, yeah, this is very nice, can, very good. Uh, she okay, can't. Okay. She for some reason. Okay, so, so, so the way that it shows that like everyone adores her and like for some reason the fact that she doesn't talk makes it be like, oh my gosh, is she approaching me? Oh no, she's trying to up upsize me or something like that. And it basically makes her like like seem like very intimidating, even though the fact that if you try to talk to her, she'd be like, uh, so it's it's kind of funny how they're like like some people like that that try to talk to her and she's like trying to like say something 
and she tries writing something in her notebook and they're like oh my gosh she won't even talk to me oh the, the horror <laughs> she's just too she's just too above me i can't when she's and like Tata, wait Tata, wait Tata, let me tell Tata you a story knows just like and Tata knows just there just like wait she just can't speak to you because she got crippling depression depression well it, it says anxiety i think yeah anxiety Ex- anxiety yeah dang but yeah so I let's respect. go watch it the slice the of life, life right i think it is a slice of life yeah comedy and slice of life they got everything they got the the crazy sundere girl who for some reason is really crazy I like we saw her room it was full of pictures of komi uh, we got the weird. We got the real girl who who uh, wants to be her dog, for some reason as well. And then we got the weird everyone's childhood friend who can't decide to be a girl or a boy. Be like, uh, that's okay. Oh, I'm like, oh no, that's not good. Uh, but yeah. But other than that, it's all really good. I think it's a. I think yes. it's really good. Um. I, w- I would think like this is probably like the one of one of the saving parts about this, this season's anime. This is like one of the top ones, if not the top one. I, I'd say it's yes. up there. I'd say it's up there. Yes, because it's delicious. It's magically delicious. But yeah, I think, you know, for this season, those are all of my my anime recommendations. These are just some just are the ones I watch. Uh, every week because you know they come out every week since you're not waiting for the dub but still hey respect <clears throat> yes respect that I'm not waiting for that trash called dub it's because you've already listened to the voice act well anyways continue continue sorry <clears throat> but yeah well, like I said that's it um I don't know if you guys have any any shows you're watching but since you said your style isn't the mind where it's just like I watch it every week when it comes out because I like it like that believe uh, it yes so yeah uh, on another side note uh, side side note the thousandth episode of uh, <laughs> One Piece is coming the thousand, out thousandth episode dang one thousand episode has passed by or gonna pass by it's almost as long as Sim- The Simpsons dang Almost, almost. It's getting there though. Dang. But yeah, what do you guys think about these animes? Except for Marcos, because you know he watches dub. Uh, you know I wait. <laughs> you know I wait. I wait. Oh, oh! I forgot to ask, Alan. Did you see season, watch season three of Log Horizon? No, I haven't. Watching uh, World Trigger, and it's been amazing. Well, okay. You recommend me that one. I sure do. I recommend you season three of Log Horizon. It it goes back to why we love Log Horizon. Interesting. I will definitely watch. And most definitely, it's dubbed. Oh no. So I'll watch it uh sub original. Yeah. Did you watch it sub the, or dub? The original. As the good Lord intended. <laughs> the good the good uh Dende intended. Do you consult with your Dende to watch your shows, buddy? Do you have time for Dende? <laughs> well, is this, is this a bridge Dende or the actual Dende? Yes. <laughs> it's the same one. Really. If, if, it's, if it's the abridged one, then that's weird. It's, it's a bridge too far. If and if will. it's not, then it's still weird because why are you talking to a green alien? I'm just saying. Very saying good you know? I'm just saying, you know? I have no idea. No, you're no not idea. saying. That's the thing. But yeah, Log Horizon is on point. Like like a pencil point? Like a katana point. Like a like so a, a pencil kunai point. point. So a pencil point. Yes. So I guess. But yeah, I'm excited for the um again, this one with the what's in uh Fruit of Evolution? It reminds me a lot of a uh, Oh the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no. the monkey. No, it reminds me a lot of uh, the spider one. Um, I reincarnated as a spider, and uh, on, only the dungeon that only I can, you know, can plunder or something like that. You plunder dungeons? What? 
Me no. That's how it goes. Like, these are light novels, and I respect these light novels. I like them. Hmm. And that's it for me. What about you, Alan? I want to knock out. <laughs> he's probably he doesn't even need an incentive. He just he's about to go. He just he's he's holding the microphone by by the strength of his willpower and love for anime. <laughs> I, I sure I sure am. Okay, chill. We wrap I'm it up. Call, there? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Thank you, uh, listeners. You know, this is Marco signing out. This is Alan over here and Al and Mr. J. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining me this for this recording. Stay frosty, on this everyone. this day, on this night. <laughs> stay warm. Stay frosty. Yes. All right, guys. Bye. Peace. Hi there. Thank you for tuning in to the LTS podcast. All the notes and more can be found in the description. By the way, we have a social media page where content is posted regularly. Feel free to reach out at, uh, at us through there or via email. Both are found in the description. When you support the show, we have a merch store where you can buy an item that you like. If buying merch is not your thing and you just want to support the show directly, we also have links to those too, if you'd like. Thank you. Also. Every comment is really appreciated. Credits in the description as well. Peace.